Have you ever seen a gown that just awakens something in you? You see it and you realize that you want to be at the point where you can have something like that. My name is Melissa Case and today we're going to start recreating the gown that got me into historical costuming. This is the gown that helped me discover prior attire and introduced me to this kind of dressmaking. Back in 2013, I happened upon Isabella's blog post about how she made this gown in a day. I was fascinated. I've read that blog post so many times over the years and it inspired me to see what was possible with my own sewing. I was thrilled when my viewers chose this gown to be the one I recreated from Prior Attire's book, The Victorian Dressmaker. I also happened to have the fashion plate that inspired her recreation. Of course, before we can get started, I need materials. Obviously, this is a big project and it has the potential to be overwhelming to plan. For the sake of my sanity, I'm starting small. I'm starting with the flowers. I made a quick trip to my local Michaels and luckily I was able to find two different types of flowers that could work for what's represented in the fashion plate. I'm pretty sure they'll be the right size since this is going to be a half scale dress. Speaking of half scale, I need to double check the measurements for my half scale dress form. Honestly, I'm also very excited to finally make something to go over these undergarments. They're pretty on their own, but feels good to switch things up a bit. Up next is the patterning. The Victorian dressmaker has gridded patterns, so they'll need to be converted and scaled up to fit my dress form. I find it easier to work on the smaller grid paper first. It just keeps everything a manageable size while I make adjustments. I consider each square to be equal to one inch. It takes time and math, but I'm able to adjust all the pattern pieces to fit my dress form. Then all that's left is to scale up each piece. I also make sure to label each pattern piece to help myself out later. I don't know how long this project is going to take, especially since I just found out we're expecting our first child. My free time is about to change drastically, so I think my biggest goal for this project is give myself grace to work on it when I can and not stress over a deadline. That being said, it will still help to actually have the fabric. I picked out the perfect silk from Silk Baron. I also bought the lace and ribbon I'll need. I originally found the lace on Etsy, but a quick Google search showed they also have an online store, so I bought it from there instead. The ribbon was only on Etsy, so that's where I ordered it from. Now I just need to wait for it all to arrive. I can't wait. After a very busy month, I'm finally sewing. All my supplies are in, but before I can work with the pretty things, I decided it would be best to make a quick mock-up that will double as the interlining for my skirt. For the sake of speed, I use clips to hold the pieces together before putting it on my dress form to check the fit. Luckily, it looks like my scaling and adjustments were perfect. Happy with the fit, I used the mock-up to cut out the silk taffeta. To keep things tidy, I used my serger to flatline the silk to the cotton inner lining before sewing the panels together with a half inch seam allowance. As always, I pressed all of my seams flat then open before pressing the seams from the front as well for good measure. Well, life got busy, so here I am, one month later, gathering up the back panel and attaching the waistband. I ran the gathering stitches by machine and I can't believe how much fabric I got to fit in that tiny space. I opted to finish the waistband by machine. I was very, very tempted to just hem the skirt by machine, but I ultimately decided to attach hem facing and finish it off by hand. It took some time, but it still felt good to just take the time to finish it in a way where you won't be able to see the stitches from the front. Especially since I'm not sure when I'll have the chance to work on this again. Well, it's been a minute. Wedding alterations, commissions, and collaborations have taken up most of my sewing time. Well, that and having a newborn. 
Actually, at this point, he's an infant, steadily working on becoming a toddler. Wow. I finally have a little bit of time between projects, so now feels like a good time to work on the half-scale ball gown again. I'm determined to finish this underskirt, so I have some math to do. I'm planning to make a tutorial about the formulas I use to scale these items and calculate the yardage for the pleats, so look for them in my description if you're interested. Once I have all my strips cut out for the pleats, I sew them up and attach them to a long strip of muslin that was just as long but slightly narrower. This causes the silk to curl around the top and bottom edges of the fabric. It looks nice and means I don't have to hem it at all. The rough part is turning it right side out, but I think the trouble's worth it. I marked how deep I want the pleats to be on a piece of cardstock and I use it as a guide to press the pleats into place. Once all the pleats were pressed, I sprayed them with a solution that was one part white vinegar, one part water. I then pressed them again to set them. I promise the vinegar scent goes away. Which is good for me, because every time I smell vinegar, I'm taken back to elementary school when there was a lice epidemic. My mom washed my hair with vinegar to repel the lice. I didn't get lice, but I'm pretty sure it's because the scent was repelling the other kids. Anyway, I ran a row of stitches along the top of the pleats to keep them in place before attaching them to the underskirt. The lace ruffle was much more straightforward. I ran gathering stitches along the top, pinned it at the front, back, and sides, and gathered it directly on the skirt. All that's left is the flowers, but I'm gonna wait until the other parts of the dress are done. Even if it takes another year. It's only been a month! That feels like an improvement over 15 months, right? To be fair, I worked on this overskirt throughout the entire month of February. I flatlined the apron overskirt with muslin to give it a little more stability. I put the apron backwards on my dress form so I could add the darts. After pressing the darts, I pressed up the hem of the apron and secured it by hand. Then I popped it back on my dress form so I could pleat up the sides. Overskirts are some of my favorite garments, which definitely helps contribute to why I love the bustle era so much. Next came the back panel, which has a placket attached to the side that will be at the side opening. I pleated the sides up to match the front panel. I usually prefer to do these pleats in the opposite direction, but this was what worked better with the reference images. I also attached a placket to the side of the apron that will be at the side opening. I like to attach plackets by machine and then hand stitch them down. I also put three ribbons in the waistband to help bustle the overskirt later. But for now, that's it for the skirts! Up next is the bodice, but that's gonna have to wait until next time because I'm pretty sure the baby's about to wake up. Bye for now.